Hello, horse guys and gals. Welcome back. Oh my goodness. Okay. Since the last time I talked to you guys, um, things have been rough. <laughs> I don't know where you guys are at, um, but if you're in the U.S., I think most of us are having it rough right now with this polar vortex, um, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, update on these, if you guys are watching on YouTube, um, my $6 headphones that I got at Five Below, yeah, they're like totes broken. Um, like the actual headphones, they don't even work. Like they, they were working for a little while. Like when I first got them, they weren't good. And then one side went out. I think it was this side. It wasn't even the broken side. And then now they just like don't work at all. So I think the microphone is working. So those of you guys listening on audio, um, it should be working. I'm pretty sure it is, but we'll find out, I guess. Um, I've even bought this, I bought this thing on Amazon for seven bucks. It's like a microphone adapter so that I could plug like a microphone that has like a jack plug into my computer because like my computer just has USBs. It doesn't have a jack for microphones. So I bought this so I could use my regular microphone, plug it into this jack and then use it in the USB. Um, and it doesn't work. Like it doesn't work at all. Nothing happens when I use it. So, so that's why I'm still using this because otherwise I have to fire up my old computer to use, um, the microphone on it. And it's so slow and it's old and it's just like such a pain just to film these episodes. Like once a month or something but yeah so that's where we're at we're just gonna try to make do with this microphone for now on these headphones that don't work so go me um yeah so it's the 18th today it's january 18th i don't know i feel like january has literally flown by um and my birthday is in 11 days so I guess that's exciting. I don't think we're doing anything, but yeah, the year is going by really fast already, which they say every year, right? Like every year we're like, oh my gosh, it went by so fast, even though it, it really didn't, but January is going pretty quick, which is fine because um, January has been crap so far. So I'm in Iowa for those of you that don't know, and we are still kind of in the midst of this polar vortex thing. It started over a week ago where we got like at least a foot of snow and I work at a horse barn. So like horse chores still need to be done, you know, whether it's like snowing or not. So luckily our barn has like somebody that lives on site. So if like there's an emergency or if things are not safe, they can, you know, help out and fill in. Um, but let's see, it started last Tuesday, I think. And, um, I was definitely like late to work. So I had to ask the, the live on live in person if they could, you know, feed and stuff until I could get out there to do stalls. So we did that. I get out there, I do stalls. And then like, we just left the horses in their stalls, um, instead of putting them out. Cause it was like, we just, the snow was just coming down so fast. Um, they had no shelters out in their pastures, so they would have just been standing out there wet and cold, even with their blankets on, um, in the wind. And the whole next, like, <laughs> week has just been awful. The horses were in their stalls for five days, which was really stressful for them. We had one that, like, mildly colicked, but we have one now that's, like, super lame. And she's old, like, she just, like, can't walk. And we don't even know what's going on with her. Like it could be her arthritis just from standing too long. But you know, they went out yesterday, thankfully, and they had a blast tearing around in the snow yesterday. And I think they went out today, but she's like still can't walk. So not sure what's going on there, but yeah, they were a nightmare to turn out. Well, not really a nightmare. They were like, they were okay, but they were still like very pushy, very rude. Um, because they've been in their stalls for five days. Like they want to get out and stretch their legs, obviously. But that's like the risk we run 
leaving horses in their stalls like we almost never do unless it's extreme conditions they always go out but you know when you do have to leave them in for a day it's like oh my god like tomorrow they're gonna be so bad to take out or to take in or whatever so it's really like a balancing act but we don't we don't leave them in their stalls almost ever unless the conditions are really extreme this fall we had like a wind storm and I left them in that day because the wind was just whipping so bad and like they're so awful to bring in in the wind um it just like amps them all every single one of them just like amps them up and they're just they're just so bad to bring in so um yeah so the weather and horses you know it's rough but this is the thing with boarding like I've, I've really concluded that like if I ever if I ever have to board my horses again like I have before but only in like pasture situations I don't ever want to do stall board like you know no hate to the people that do if it works for you that's great and there are some good horses that we don't really have any problems with but they almost always develop bad habits like it is such it's so hard like I, I think every single horse we have in the barn has a bad habit if not multiple so I'm just like I hope I never have to board my horses somewhere and have to stall board them because like they're just they're gonna learn bad habits it's just a like almost fact that they're going to have a bad habit somewhere whether it's like pinning their ears when you feed them or like going out really really bad and coming in really bad they're really pushy or they freaking kick the shit out of their stalls um we have a couple that just like they're so dangerous like we have to use no ch nose chains on them which i don't like i think if you guys watch my videos enough that you know that like i don't believe really in using like chains and stuff but it's a matter of discipline and their owners don't give that to them and so you know they they're hard to handle for the staff um we've had to ask like a couple to leave because their horses are just too dangerous so it's really rough you know and I feel bad for the horses and then there's like those owners that board their horses but then they never come to see them they never do anything with them and it's like dude why are you paying like so much money to stall board a horse that you don't even like come visit or like remember exists I don't get that personally um I know like some people just have like different attachment issues and stuff but I could never personally I could never justify like spending hundreds of dollars boarding a horse that I just never do anything with like it's different like we've had some some people that like board their older horses you know they're living their retirement life and stuff they don't really do a lot with them but they still come to visit them and like they still come feed them brush on them like graze them around the yard and stuff and like that I that is totally cool like I totally get that you're spending time with your horse in their retirement years like that's totally understandable but there are people that don't even do that like they just their horse just lives here at the barn like their horse probably doesn't even know who their owner is or thinks that we're their owners because they just never see them and that I, I truly don't understand that like why are you spending so much money why not just find this horse a pasture home um you know especially like if they're an easy keeper they don't take meds they don't like you know why not just find them a pasture to live in why like stall board them at all um and pasture board places is usually a lot cheaper so I don't know I don't get it myself but there's you know there's one of those at like every barn and there's always like you know those interesting borders but yeah so so yeah at work we've had the horses in for like five days they went out yesterday and they tore around and stuff and I know that they were relieved just to be out of their stalls and out of confinement because it, it is hard on them um even though that like they're used to being stalled like it's still hard to be confined for that long but the snow was like so deep um and it it started to like freeze over like you know some snow it comes down and it's got like some moisture in it you can like pack it have snowball fights and stuff like that snow has some water and moisture in it but then like it so it got super cold it got to like negative I at my house I only saw it got to like negative teens but I think some people had it like negative 30s 
Um, and so all that moisture in the snow then freezes. So the snow becomes like hard, almost like ice packed and the drifts are like hard as a rock. So like the snow was so hard, so deep, like it was up to my waist, some spots, the drifts were so deep. So like you couldn't open the gates. The horses basically had nowhere to go because they're just like tromping through these massive piles. And you know, it's like walking through the Arctic tundra to get to their water or something. So, um, and a lot of them have shoes on too, which is, you know, seems to be common because most of them are English horses. So they're like shoot on almost all four feet. So sending them out with shoes and stuff. I don't know. So we didn't put them out, but we have a maintenance guy that is so awesome. And he literally spent like two days for like six hours a day plowing. Um, and so he plowed like all of the gate holes, the driveways and stuff, which has been so helpful. And we were able to put them out yesterday, thankfully. We got the, we have like a side-by-side -side that we use to throw hay and stuff that we got that stuck. Um, I don't know, a week ago or something. So like we put the hay in the back of the RTV and then we can like spread it through the pastures instead of walking it out there. So we just drive it around to each pasture, spread the piles and stuff. And so one of the girls I work with, she like took it out um, didn't realize how deep the snow was where she was driving and then got it stuck and the four wheel drive like doesn't work. So she gets it stuck and then I get there and she's like, I think we could just pull it out, um, with my truck. And I said, okay, I'll go find a chain and, you know, bring your truck back here. So we get it back there, hook it up. Um, and like, we don't get it. We don't get it unstuck. I don't know. I don't know why. We just didn't get it unstuck. And then, so we unhook it and then her truck is stuck now in the pasture. So I'm like, oh, great. Like, we're, it's just the two of us here. We don't know how to like, so I tell her, like, I think my truck could probably tug you out. Like it's just spinning in the snow, making a hole. So I'm like, if I just give you a good jerk with my truck, I think like we could get it out. So I go get my truck, back it up to hers. I give her a jerk with my truck and get her truck unstuck, okay, right? So her truck is freed. My truck is now stuck in the gate hole. So we can't even put horses out and let them just walk around <laughs> the stuff because my truck is in the gate hole. So I'm like, well, this is it, I guess. I don't know what to do. <laughs> so we had to call the live-in person who came out and got the tractor, which the tractor is like an oversized lawnmower. It's the smallest thing I think you could call a tractor. Um, it looks like a, a big lawnmower with big tires on it and then it's got a bucket. So, I mean, this thing, this thing is like, it's good for plowing <laughs> and like scooping the manure pile up on itself, but that's about it. So I was like, I don't even know that that's gonna cut it, but we'll try it. So we try it for a while and then it's not working. So she turns it around and then we hook it to the back. Eventually she gives me a good enough pull that my truck comes out and then my coworker drives her truck out, but we still have no RTV. It's still out there stuck. Um, so it's still stuck out there. We just turned the horses out and they had to just walk around it, but that was a nightmare that took like two hours of our morning and we also use the we call it the rtv i don't know why it's like a side by side but we use that to clean stalls so the bucket like dumps or the the bed dumps so we use that to clean stalls we just scoop the manure right into the back of the atv and then we take it out and dump it well we didn't have it so we had to do like 18 stalls by wheelbarrow which like actually wasn't the worst thing in the world, but I so would not want to do that every day. Um, and so we did it all by wheelbarrows. We had to trudge the wheelbarrows all the way out to the manure pile in the snow. Oh my gosh. Like literally the people that say that they like winter, I'm literally just like F you. Like don't even talk to me. We cannot be friends because like I could just cannot stand 
like this sounds like snobby but I just can't stand people that like winter I'm like shut up don't talk about it I don't even want to like remember that winter exists it, like eight months out of the year so just stop talking about it um and that it's just because I've owned livestock all my life and it's just like it's just the worst like it just makes everything more difficult um you know if you don't have a four-wheel drive vehicle you're literally screwed like there's there's no helping you unfortunately and I remember like when I worked retail um I mean like you couldn't call in without being crucified for it I'm so glad that I have this job now where my boss is like if it's not safe for you to be on the roads like don't be on the roads that's why we have a live-in person some of us that live closer can try to like fill in but like stay home if it's not safe or you can't get out when I worked in retail it was like your boss expected you whether you might die or not like you know there's that meme that's like Lord Farquaad and he's like you may die but that's a risk I'm willing to take. That was like working retail. That was the boss working retail because he was like, you know, well, that's not an excuse or something. <laughs> and there was even one time, like my boyfriend worked retail for a while and like we live out in the country, right? My boyfriend drives like a 250 long bed truck. I mean, it's a big truck. We can't even drive it like in the city most of the time because it's too big. It doesn't fit into parking spaces and stuff. And so he couldn't get to work one day and his boss offered to come get him. He's like, well, I'll come pick you up. And he's like, dude, you drive a Ford Escape. If my F-250 long bed can't get down my driveway, your 250 is not or your Escape is not going to make it. <laughs> like, it's just so extreme. And like, there was always some like, I feel like. There was an assumption that like you were just trying to miss work and it's like dude personally me i almost never called in i think i could count on one hands one hand the amount of times that i ever have called into a job um and so it was never like me trying to miss work it's like no i just don't want to risk my life dri trying to drive to town uh because like i'm afraid of getting crucified by you so yeah, that was a rough thing about working retail. I'm so glad I don't anymore. And my bosses are like, like put their employees first. I even saw a restaurant, um, one of our local restaurants posted on Facebook uh, a few days ago, like when we were getting more snow that they were going to be closed all day because they want to keep their employees safe and let them stay home. And like I commented on their post and was like, good like this is what more bosses should do because like having a restaurant open is not more important than like your employees getting in car accidents because they're too afraid to call into work so yeah that's my opinion on the matter I don't really know I don't really know why you'd live in Iowa and not have a four-wheel drive vehicle at this point but I mean I get like you buy what you can afford especially in this economy but yeah I just feel like I, I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I would have done my whole life up to this point without having a four-wheel drive vehicle. My very first car that my parents bought me in high school was a Mazda Tribute. <laughs> and I, there is a lot of videos filmed in that Mazda Tribute. So I'm sure some of you guys probably remember her, um, which was basically a little Ford Escape. Uh, it's literally the exact same car as a Ford Escape, but made by Mazda instead. And that thing got me everywhere. It got me to the barn to do chores after school, got me to school fine, got me to my dad's fine. It was all wheel drive. So like, I think it was mainly front wheel drive. I don't remember. It was like one or the other. I think it was mainly front wheel drive, but then the real rear wheels would kick in when they like could feel like no traction or like that I needed four wheel drive. So I never had to like switch it into four wheel drive very rarely but it would just it would kick in when it needed to and that thing never got stuck like ever it got stuck one single time when I was trying to go to the barn to do chores after school and I was just like busting through drifts and I busted through this one that was just freaking huge so like I don't even blame that on the car because I was literally trying to bust through like a six foot tall drift and like what no car is gonna like probably do that but 
that thing was so awesome. I miss that car. Um, she got me everywhere. She always started. I mean, even in the negative 50 degree weather, that car, it would start. It would start over my truck any day. So yeah, speaking of trucks, um, I bought a new truck. So I'm really excited. Um, I've been like, I've been really pondering really like, I've come to the realization a while ago that like I need to look for a new truck. My truck is a 2500. It's a Chevy 2500. You guys have seen my truck. You guys see me complain about my truck in my vlogs all the time. Um, which it's actually been running good. So I think the last time I vlogged, I had said like, there's my truck being a piece of shit in the driveway still. Um, so for Christmas, I got some Christmas money and told my boyfriend, take this, go find a new battery for my truck and put it in my truck. <clears throat> Cause that was its biggest problem was like the battery was bad and it, it wouldn't even take any charge. I mean, we would put it on the charger overnight. We did that for like two or three days and the key like still wouldn't even turn on. Like you turn the key on, but it would just be black, like not even a ding, nothing. So the battery was just bad. And so he went and got a new battery for it. And it's been running really good. I, I don't even know what he would what I would have done if he wouldn't have put a new battery in it through this snowstorm because it's been my only source of transportation. So it's doing good right now. Um, it needs a couple things fixed on it, but I just know like it's time. <laughs> I'm gonna need to get a new truck. Um, just because this one is just at the point in its life where it just needs constant fixing. Um and, you know, I think it's time for me to move up, I guess. Um, it's been a really good truck, but it also, it struggles. It's been a hauling truck, like, all its life. Um, I know two guys that owned it before me, and the one guy used it to pull his camper. The other guy used it to pull his cars around. It's done great pulling my horses around, but it does struggle, um, when I have like a full load of horses in my trailer or pulling round bales when I've got my round bales on my flatbed and stuff like it it has its moments where it, it struggles and so eventually I would like to buy a bigger trailer and you know I'm not gonna stop hauling hay anytime soon and you know potentially want to get a bigger hay trailer one day so it's just been like the time that I'm good I need something bigger um, the same or bigger and newer. So I I just don't like looking for vehicles. It's kind of stressful for me because I'm not a mechanic, right? So I don't totally know what to look for. Like I know the major things about like miles and the tires and the amount of rust on it and, you know, stuff like that. But if I pop a hood on a truck, I'll know what the hell I'm looking at. I mean, I can see the battery. I can see where you put the oil in. Um, and that's about it. Like, I don't know what I'm looking at. So I just like, I always have to take people with me to look at vehicles. Um, I don't know, like the different types of vehicles, like the different engines that are in them. My boyfriend talks a lot about the Cummins. Ugh, I don't know what that is. Like, I don't, I don't know what engines are notorious for what, um, and stuff like that. So like, ugh. I just don't even like looking for vehicles. So I usually have to ask my brother-in-law, who's my mechanic, a million questions about each one that I see. And then trying to find one in a good price range because the market is just so stupid expensive right now because everything's expensive. So it's stressful. Um, but I knew that like I need to start looking. I need to figure out how much I can spend and stuff. So I looked around on Facebook Marketplace for a while and then um, a girl I work with at the barn was, she just bought a new truck so she was going to sell her old one and I told her like, you know, oh well, you know, I need a new truck and um, she said she already had an offer on it and I was like, honestly, it's probably more than I can afford anyways, but um. I don't know, something with her offer went through because it never left. Like her her other truck lives at the barn basically. So um, it never left and stuff. And then I asked her a few weeks ago, I was like, is your truck still for sale? 
Um, and she said like not, she was not pushing to sell it. Like she didn't really have it advertised anymore. Um, but you know, it, it does just sit around. So like she would still sell it. And so after talking with my bank and stuff, I got approved for a certain amount. I made an offer and she accepted my offer. So I got at the truck. Uh, so I'm pretty excited. Um, she used it. She's got literally like a folder, a half an inch thick of all the things she's had like rebuilt on it, all the maintenance she's done on it. The tires are almost brand new. They have like 10,000 miles on them. Um, it's a 99 F350. So it's older than my truck, but it's got like 250,000 miles on it, which for a diesel is literally like half its life. Um, I've been told by multiple mechanics and stuff that like a diesel, if you take care of it, will will go 500,000 miles, no problem. So, so really it's only lived half its life. Like it's not a concerning amount of miles. If it was a gasser or like, you know, a car or something, it would be, but um, it's a 7.3 engine, which is the better ones. Um, my dad has always said, if you get a diesel, get, get a seven, three, don't get the, I think the six, um, six, four, maybe, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, so I'm really excited. It's got a little bit of body rust, but like freaking there's chunks coming off of my truck. So I'm really not concerned about the body rust. Like that's not the end of the world. Um, but yeah, it's, it's at the barn. But with the snow and everything, it's been so snowed in. And with this polar vortex being like negative 30s, she's like, I'm sure that it's gelled up out there. So I will bring it home once I can move it. <laughs> and she has hauled that truck. She has pulled like big, huge, massive trailers with that truck all over, probably all over the country, honestly. I mean, she does a lot of hauling. So I know it's reliable. I, I have all the maintenance records on it now. I know who owned it. She took really good care of it because she loved that truck. Um, and really the only reason she sold it is because she goes to Florida um, every winter, you know, doing her English show stuff. So she's like, I just can't drive it to Florida. And so that's really the only reason that like I'd even get rid of it. So yeah, I'm excited for it. I hope it'll be good and reliable and... Um, now that I have to make a payment on it every month, I'm going to probably take better care of it than I do my truck, but my truck needs a couple things fixed on it. And then I'm probably going to sell it. Um, it's got a fuel leak, which I'm not sure I've seen it drip out of the bottom of the truck, like, and it just smells like gas when you're around it. So like it's, it's leaking fuel and it starts really hard, um, so I'm not sure. I've seen it drip out of the bottom, like where the gas tank is. I don't know if the gas tank is cracked or if it's dripping out of a line down there. I don't know, but that's going to need fixed. And then it's got this weird thing with the oil pressure gauge. There's like one of the little gauges on the dash is for the oil pressure. And that gauge just goes crazy sometimes. Like the thing will just go back and forth and back and forth. And then it dings at me like oil pressure low. Um... Like, the truck has never acted any different, so I don't know if, like, the oil pressure is actually low or the gauge is just bad and is, like, going off for no reason because, like, the truck still drives fine. I mean, I've never, like, had an issue, so I don't know. So I'll need to get those couple things fixed. It probably just needs an oil change, too, before I sell it, but yeah, I'm excited. I hope that this new one works out. I'm, I'm going to be really relieved to have something that I know is big enough that it's not going to have any trouble pulling my trailers or my hay and then maybe in a few years I can upgrade trailers I would like to find something with living quarters in it because we do go camping my boyfriend's gone camping with me once now with the horses and stuff and like I, he will not go camping without air conditioning he's one of those you know glampers so he's not going to go if there's not air conditioning because he just, he cannot justify sitting in a hundred degree trailer all weekend. And, you know, he's not a horse guy. So like he needs something to do too. He, like the one time he went camping with me to the endurance ride, he brought like his switch and like his Xbox and stuff. So he could like at least play games or something while I was out riding. And so I want a trailer, like I could put a TV in there, you know, 
we could glamp a little bit. I'm not against glamping a little bit. Like I'm not strictly like tent camper type person, but I do want, you know, something nicer than that. So yeah. Um, oh shoot. My podcast stopped. Okay. I don't know where I ended off there, but the, it just stopped recording. Anyway. Um, yeah, I want something with like a small living quarters to put a TV in or whatever so that, you know, we've got some, some sort of entertainment. I mean, it gets boring for me too. Like when we're camping and outside of my ride time, I just kind of sit around and, you know, look at the fire and play on my phone. But, you know, it'd be nice to have something, something a little bit better. Um, I actually posted one of my trailers for sale. My little two horse bumper pole. Um, so I have three trailers. I have the two horse bumper pole. I have the 16 foot stock orange trailer that I redid, like repainted. And then I have the 16 foot red stock trailer. Um, that's the tall version, like the, the, I think it's seven foot tall instead of six. And so I have three trailers, which really is kind of excessive. I've had the orange one for so long now. I like, I really don't want to get rid of it. And I've put a lot of work into it. Um, and it's always been a good, reliable stock trailer for me. The red one, I've only had a couple years. My dad actually bought it at an auction for 400 bucks and it doesn't have a title or anything, which kind of sucks. And it doesn't have any lights or brakes. So I got to do that at some point, but it's nice and big. It's got a pretty good floor in it. Um, it needs mats on the floor, but it's tall. Um, it's a bit heavier than my orange one, but like, I just, I didn't really need to have three trailers. And plus I sent Hazel to training. So to try to make up some of that cash, I posted my two horse bumper pull for sale. Um, cause that's the only one that I really would want to get rid of. And even though I love that little trailer, I love having it just for like, I need to run BB to town to the vet just to get her shots or like, you know, I've got, it's super lightweight. It like doesn't cost anything to, to haul it. I took it to Wisconsin to get red because red's like one horse and he's small and it's so fuel efficient. So why not take the little one? So yeah, I really love having it around, but, um, it's only what I would really get rid of. So I posted it for sale for 1200 bucks and you guys like, some people on Facebook seriously just like don't know how to just keep scrolling if they don't like something. I don't know how many times a day I see something so stupid on Facebook. Then I just like scroll by it because I just don't care. Some people don't know how to do that. So I had this person like laugh reacted to my post and then commented like just about how it wasn't worth that much. And, you know, somebody commented like I'll come get it for 600 bucks or something. I think I said I posted it for 1200 bucks. And like, honestly, I like it too much to sell it cheap. Like I'm not gonna sell it for 600 bucks. Like it's worth more than 600 bucks just for me to have around for little trips and stuff. So I was like, honestly, I don't think 1200 bucks is that bad for it. I mean, it's in nice shape. It's got nice tires on it. I just had the lights and brakes like fixed on it. The floor's in really good shape. You know, it's got a little like rust um, in the tack area, like where the tack goes in the front, but like nothing that's gonna, you know, it's not gonna like rust a hole out in it or anything. So, I mean, I didn't think it was that bad. I felt like it was pretty reasonable. Um, and not to mention, I see these same trailers for sale on Facebook all the time for like a stupid amount of money. And I even saw this one the other day. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'll insert a picture of it here. I saw this one for sale on Facebook for $5,000 last week. And, you know, flipping through the pictures, it looks nice. I mean, it's got nice sides in it. It's got a nice floor and mats and stuff. But that thing is literally no bigger than my trailer. You know, it's maybe a little bit nicer. The paint looks a bit newer and stuff, but that's no bigger than my trailer, you know, and people were harassing me about posting it for 1200 bucks. This thing it is listed for $5,000. Like that is not a $4,000 like quality difference than my trailer. It's absolutely not. 
And so I was like, Jesus, this person's like nickel and diamond these people for this trailer and there's people in the comments of her post like that trailer is definitely worth five thousand dollars like people need to stop being so rude like i was like what part of the country are you in because i will just send my trailer there somewhere and sell it there if if people are willing to spend that money on it um so i don't know i don't get it i guess like value is just in the eye of the beholder but yeah, I haven't gotten any bites on my trailer. I mean, except for that person that said they'd come get it for 600 bucks, but I'm not gonna sell it for that. So, yeah. If somebody wanted to give me $1,000 for it, maybe I would consider that, but I don't know. I put some work into that trailer too. I've had that trailer a long time. So I bought it for 500 bucks from a gal um, and it was in really rough shape when I got it it like it had the the front cut out so like you know the two horse bumper pulls the horse goes in and their chest like goes to the front wall and then their head goes over into the little eating spot um well that front wall where the horse's chest would would you know come up to was cut out like they cut it with with like a grinder or a, a torch or something but it was literally cut out purposefully and so it just went right into the nose where the tack area would be. And the lady I bought it from told me they, they moved hogs with it. Like they just put pigs in it and moved them around. Um, so we had to fix that. Basically, one of my dads bought a bunch of tongue and groove boards and we made a wall of tongue and groove boards, cut it to size and then like bolted it on there. So there's a wall there now out of wood but it was so ugly and like dangerous. They had put like, um, you know, those wire, wire hog panels. Um, they had shoved one of those in there. So like they, they couldn't, you know, a horse couldn't like get their, you know, couldn't like get their leg up in the front, but they just put like one of those wire panels there. So I mean, a horse could still get their foot stuck in it or something. And it was like so dangerous. So, <laughs> We had to fix that. And then the tires, we literally hauled it. I think we hauled it all the way home on three tires because the one was like just flat and wouldn't hold air. So my stepdad, when he went with me to get it, had to like take the tire off and we hauled it all the way back home, like an hour, hour and a half went on three tires. Um, oh, it had one of those weird jacks on it. So like it had one of those jacks that like, I don't even know. I'll put a picture of one if I can find it, but it had, it, it almost worked like a gear where you like cranked it up and then the thing came out the top. I don't know how to describe it, but it had the stupid jack on it and I think it was bent. So you couldn't even like move it up and down really. So we cut that off. I bought a new jack for it, put that on there. Like I've done some work on it as well. Um, I luckily didn't have to replace the floor cause the floor was still in okay shape. But yeah, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't pretty when I bought it, but it's been a nice little trailer to have around. Um, and it's, it's honestly not a bad trailer for the small horses. I never hold soccer in it because soccer would have been too big and like sugar and BB, they don't like getting in that trailer, but they will. Um, and it's works fine to like haul them around and stuff in it and red hopped right in it, which is good to know. And he fit in it really well. So like the smaller horses, it's it's totally fine to haul them around in it. Chance has been in it before, which is so nice. I'm glad like he'll get in a smaller trailer like at this like young stage in his life. So hopefully he'll be able to haul around in it his whole life. But, but yeah. Um, I hope that I could get Hazel in it one day. Um, Hazel went to training. So I think the last time I updated you guys, she was still at home and she was kind of sick. Um, she did go to training. I took her and she was a lot better than she was doing. So she um, has been at training for a little over a week now. And I texted her the trainer the other day because I hadn't heard anything from them. And I'd kind of been wondering about her. Um, when I dropped her off, her balance was still not great like she got out of the trailer and kind of stumbled a little bit which was understandable I mean she'd been in the trailer basically being stalled for a week so I mean she didn't really have the opportunity to like walk around and stretch her legs and stuff so she kind of stumbled getting out she was a little wobbly walking into the barn um 
and we got her in there. So I was like, you know, told her that the vet said that the longer that she's off the bad hay, like the symptoms should go away. Um, so about a week ago, I texted her because, you know, I haven't even like, you know, tried to make it out there or anything with this snowstorm going on. So I texted her and just said like, you know, how's Hazel doing? Does she seem to be improving at all? Like if she's not improving, let me know because I want to have a vet out to investigate it further. And so she texted me back a couple days later and said that Hazel is doing actually pretty good. Her balance does seem to be getting better. They've been doing a lot of trotting and a lot of backing up and stuff to, you know, regain that coordination and build her muscles back up. So I was like, oh, thank God. Um, Cause I was worried about her. Like I was just worried that like, God, what if she doesn't improve? And like, what if it is something really neurological happening and, and stuff? So I'm glad to hear that she is making improvements. Hopefully she'll continue to improve. Um, I guess if I see her like plateau or they don't think that she's like, she just stops improving, then, you know, we'll go from there. But I am glad that she's like, she's somewhere being worked because like, that's why I wanted her to send her somewhere over the winter is just because I don't have the means to work with her all winter or to keep her really consistent all winter. And, and that's really what she needs is to be consistent you know um we get weather like this and who knows how long this snow could be around we got two feet of snow out there be here for the next three months probably so between that and you know my ring is just dirt so when it is thawed enough and it is nice out it's muddy and it's sloppy and which is really just dangerous to be trying to work a, a green horse in um, was slipping and falling and stuff like that and like me trying to be out there in the mud like slopping around and stuff it's just not feasible so I buckled down and just spent the money to send her to a trainer for two months so she will be there until early March and that's kind of been nice <laughs> not having to worry about the feed so much you know she's getting fed there obviously and then in her pen, I put Red and Chance. So they're out there now on a round bale, which I'm really hoping will benefit Red and help him gain some weight. Although they have no idea how to eat it with the slow feed net on it. I put the slow feed net on it and I got it tightened just, just barely, like not quite enough. So it doesn't close completely. So there's like a hole, like a foot by a foot wide where like it just didn't tighten completely. Um, at the like at the tie so they can stick their heads through that one by one hole and they've just been eating out of that so they've been eating out of it chance has his head stuck way in there i'm just waiting for him to get stuck and freak out um and i closed it farther the other day because you know they had eaten it down to where it could close farther and they literally just like stopped eating it chance just started eating the nasty hay out of the ground because he's like well i guess i'll just starve because he can't figure out like how to eat it through the net. So this has been a learning curve for them. Um, but they have shelter now up in that in that pen. So I'm so glad I got them moved over there the day before the snowstorm hit and we got round bales put in. And thank God because like it would be so miserable trying to do chores for everyone in this weather. And you know, I'd be worried about them because Red is still underweight. Chance is a baby. So, sorry, I got to clear my throat. <coughs> um, so I'm glad I got them moved over there and they could eat at the round bale to keep warm. So, I mean, everybody did pretty good through the weather. I mean, I don't think anybody really had issues. Um, I had a couple of them that were a little bit cold. I did put blankets on my three, uh, Luna, BB, and Sugar, just since they're out there not really with any cover. They, I mean, they have plenty of tree cover, but um, the new horses got put in their pen. So I put blankets on them just to kind of, really just to keep them dry. Um, I think Sugar and Luna would have been fine. And then Red's, you know, he wears his blanket. He's been wearing his blanket for a while, but, um, but yeah, I think I did see Red shiver a little bit, but he pretty much stood at the round bale and ate through the entire snowstorm. So he's just now figured out that there's a shelter down there and he's been standing in it for like two days, but Chance stands in that shelter and he does not move. If it's snowing, raining, windy, anything, he is such a drama queen. He will go down there, stand in that shelter. And even if I come like out with a bucket of grain, he's like, nah, I am moving. 
So it's kind of hilarious. Um, but I'm glad like Red was eating. I think that probably definitely helped keep him fairly warm. But, but yeah, so all the ponies are doing pretty good. We're supposed to get a little bit more snow this week, I think. So, and, and then it's supposed to be cold again next week. So not really doing any horsework, unfortunately. I bought a shovel today at Walmart um, so that I could start shoveling some paths to each pen because right now I'm still just like tromping through the snow to get to everybody. And oh my God, I snapped my hose the other day trying to get it on the hydrant. I always take it off and I always drain it twice. So I walk it out and drain it once and I do it again on the way back. And that has saved my ass so much this winter. Um, just keeping it drained, like no water in it to freeze and plug it. So it's been working, but I always take it off the hydrant. Well, the other day I went to try to put it on the hydrant and screw it on. And it's just so frozen and brittle that it literally just snapped like lit like two feet from the end of it. I was like, are you joking right now? So I've been having to carry buckets to everybody. I just carry them like 10 gallons at a time. And so that's been super annoying, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's about probably enough complaining for me today. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump off of here now, but thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening. I hope your guys' horses are doing okay through this weather. I'm so glad that nobody like colicked or, you know, had, I don't know, hurt themselves or something because there would have been no way to haul them anywhere. Um, but thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and got some entertainment out of it. Um, whatever you're doing on this beautiful winter day. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I have. That's all I got for you guys. So thank you for listening. Tune in for the next episode. Hopefully I'll have some more updates and we'll be done with this stupid snowstorm soon, but that's all I have for you guys today. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye.